all centered around a bottle. A very intricate and artistic bottle. Anything you wished while it was in your possession came true. But you had to sell the bottle to someone else in a fortnight for less than you paid for it. If you didn't, you'd go stark, staring mad. Hello, creeps. This is Peter Laurie opening the doors at the Mystery Playhouse. Yes, tonight's bedtime story is about a bottle. An empty bottle. Well, not quite empty. Maybe, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's just say for now that this is no ordinary bottle. And I think you'll be interested to hear about it. I really do. Robert Louis Stevenson wrote this story many, many years ago. But it's been modernized and the scene changed from Hawaii to New York City. So get yourself set for something different in a way of a mystery. Listen now to the fascinating tale of the bottle imp. I didn't buy the bottle for an instant. Now I can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. It's the imp. It's the imp in the bottle laughing at me. It's him. It's him there jumping up and down and laughing. You can't get away from him. You can't get away from the imp. <laughs> one cent. All I did was buy the bottle for one cent. Now I can't get rid of it. Come, gentlemen. I can't Let me close the door. I can't get rid of it. Well, as you can see, gentlemen, my my wife is mad. Mr. Wilder, in my entire career as a psychiatrist, I've never heard anything so strange. Your wife is absolutely convinced there is an imp in that bottle. I told you it was an unusual case, Dr. Jenkins. That's why I asked your assistance. I'm inclined to think it's paranoia, delusions. But well, that was my original diagnosis, Dr. Jenkins. But now I'm thinking of schizophrenia, projection of personality. No, 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 it's neither of those things. It's a bottle. I wish I had never said either. Come, come, Mr. Wilder. You're not beginning to think the bottle is inhabited by a creature. I don't... I don't know what I think. Ever since that bottle came into this house, nothing's been the same. Gentlemen, perhaps I should tell you that I've always feared that I myself would go mad. It's, it's in the blood. My grandfather... Mr. Wilder, that would have no bearing on your wife's mental condition. And as for this bottle, why, there's absolutely no scientific evidence. If you're going to take that attitude, what's the use of talking to you at all? Uh, Dr. Erickson, I suggest we let Mr. Wilder tell us what he wants to, in his own way. Science or no science, there's something diabolical about that bottle. It was strange just the way it came into my possession. It all started about four weeks ago. It, it was late when I left the office. It had just started to rain, so I darted into a doorway when I looked for a cab. All of a sudden, I was conscious of my surroundings. There was a curio shop in the doorway. Though I'll swear that there had never been one there before. It was our anniversary and I thought I'd buy something to celebrate the occasion. Good evening, sir. I want something for a woman, uh, not too expensive. Uh, May I suggest this bottle here on the shelf? Well, that's very nice, but... I can't afford anything like that. Oh, you'd be surprised at how inexpensive it is, sir. Mm -hmm. And notice its fine line, the exquisite gold lacing, the twisted glass here around the neck. A master glass blower made that piece. Well, it's very nice, but perhaps something else would be more. Nice, sir. The bottle is the only piece we have for sale. Wait, this big store, all this stock. Oh, I admit it's clear, sir, and I don't blame you for being surprised. I was engaged to set up this shop, fill it with curios, and then offer this bottle as our sole item of merchandise. <laughs> I've never heard of anything so eccentric. Let me see that bottle again. Yes, sir. Well, I'm not an expert, but I can see this bottle is worth a lot of money. Maybe thousand dollars. So that's the oddest part. You can buy it for three cents. Three cents? Is this some kind of a joke? If I hadn't been offered a lot of money, I, I wouldn't be working here. You'll think I'm a little mad now, sir, but I can't sell you the bottle without explaining certain things. <laughs> All right, go ahead, explain. 
first, it is said there's an imp in the bottle, and the person who possesses the bottle can have all the things he wishes for. <laughs> Aladdin's lamp. Now I know it's a joke. As you will, sir. Second, whoever possesses the bottle soon begins to go mad. If he doesn't get rid of it within a fortnight, he becomes completely and eternally mad. Well, the, the whole thing's clear now. Some rich eccentric is having a bit of fun. I hope it's something like that. Third, whoever buys the bottle can only get rid of it by reselling it for less than he paid for it. Well, I'm not gullible if somebody thinks he can offer a beautiful expensive bottle for sale at three cents hang a lot of superstitious ideas on it, and have fun watching someone shy away. Well, he's mistaken in my case. I'm not superstitious. I'll buy that bottle. Here you are. Here's the three cents. It's a lovely antique, darling. The very nicest we've ever had. And I think that legend is perfectly fascinating. Especially that part about the owner of the bottle getting anything he wishes for. Oh, I wish I had $20,000. I'll get it, darling. Hello. Oh, hello, Jameson. What's that? My, my uncle is dead. When? How did it happen? Oh. Naturally. I always thought he'd go out with heart failure. What? He, he left me $20,000? Huh? Oh, sure, sure, I'm sure I'm glad to, to get the money. Okay. Call me tomorrow. There's something wrong here. I don't know. Susan, dear. If you don't mind, let's not go out to dinner. I'd, I'd just like to sit around and look at that bottle. Susan, do you have to listen to the radio all the time? Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Does it disturb you? Is it too loud? Loud as dog to get to my nerves. Now, please turn it off. Very well, dear. Robert, are you upset about something? Of course not. But you are. It's that bottle, isn't it? All right, so it is. Not to upset anyone. Well, darling, you're not going to start all that about the silly legend again, are you? Silly? How do you know it's silly? You explain what's happened to us the last seven days, the $20,000, the other things. Don't you realize that every time I've made a wish, it's come true? Coincidence, dear. But what if it isn't coincidence? What if the legend is true? What if all of the legend is true? What if I go... Robert! Well, you know it's in the blood. Could happen. My grandfather... You can't. We never talk about it. What good will not talking about it do? Oh, no. It's just the doorbell, dear. I'll get it. Whoever it is, I don't want to see him. All right, dear. Oh, that was an old thing. Well, I need is a drink. Oh, but it's for Mr. Ellis. He's very insistent about Ellis. it. Ellis? He has his nerve. Who is he, dear? The crooked lawyer who's been peppering me for weeks. Tell him to get out before I throw him out. Oh, are you going to throw him out? You. How dare you walk in here? Well, you won't see me in your office, so I came here. My business with you is important. You haven't any business with me. You never have had and you never will have. You're a shite, a lawyer, and a petty crook. Now, look here, Mr. Wilder. You can't talk to me like that. I'll sue you for defamation of character. I'll sue you. You understand? Why don't you answer me? Oh, I wish you'd fall down dead. Don't be sarcastic. Don't. Oh. Oh. Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis. Robert, what's the matter with him? I don't know. It, here, help me with his head. Mr. Ellis. Mr. Ellis. Oh, my God. He's dead. Susan, he's dead. Oh, 
darling. Don't you think you should stop drinking? The coroner said Mr. Ellis died of heart failure. Oh, I know what's in your mind, that bottle. You think it had something to do with Mr. Ellis's death? Don't you see it's just coincidence and all this about beginning to go mad is superstitious nonsense? Robert, are you going to talk to me? Three more days. Oh, darling, please. Three more days, the fortnight ends. And I shall be completely and eternally mad. Robert, why don't you take that bottle off and leave it someplace? Get rid of it. No. According to the legend, the only way I can get rid of it is by selling it for less than I pay for it. Well, then sell it if you insist. <laughs> I've got to peddle that bottle around telling about the legend and offering it for two cents, then people would know I'm insane. No, I can't do it. Well, then just take it out and get rid of it. Please, Robert, for my sake, if not for your own. All right, Susan. I'll try it. But remember, if in some magical manner it comes back to me, then you'll know that the legend is true. And if it is true, I won't be back. Won't be back? Oh, Robert, don't talk like that, darling. I don't want you to go at all. Stay here. No, I'm going now, Susan. Let me have that bottle. Robert, no, I don't want you to leave. Susan, let go. Robert. I have to do it. Don't you understand? I have to do it. Robert, please don't go. Robert! I was almost out of my mind when I left the house with the bottle. I felt that unless I got rid of it, the legend about the bottle was true, and I'd soon go mad. I walked down a dark street and stuffed the bottle deep into an ash barrel. Then, relieved, get pretty shaky, I, I called a cab and asked him to drive me to the nearest place I could get a drink. Here you are, sir. Well, how much do I owe you? Down and a half. Okay. Here you are. Keep the change. Thanks. Hey. Hey, fella. Yes? You, you left something in the cab. Oh? What is it? I, I guess it's a bottle. What? How could it have got there? I put it in. Search me, fella. I, I guess you had it with you when you got in the cab. Look, right here. Here's five dollars. What? Drive to the Brooklyn Bridge and take that bottle and throw it in the river. Do you understand? I don't understand, but for five bucks, I don't have to. Leave it to me, mister. I'll get rid of that bottle for you. No, just just a cigarette. Okay. Here's a change, mister. Keep it. Something swell is just happening to me. Good night. Uh, mister. Hey, mister. Yeah? What is it? Hey, you forgot something on the counter here. Forgot something? What are you talking about? No. No, it can't be. This bottle, mister. Where'd you get that? The cab driver gave it to you, didn't he? Cab driver? What are you talking about? My cab driver gave me nothing. That's a lie. Hey, now, look, take it easy, mister. Give me that bottle. This time I'll get rid of it once and for all. Hey, what's the idea? Where do you think you are? In some guy smashing things around like that? You're... Oh, come on, back here. Yes. Yes, dear. Oh, darling, are you all right? I thought you'd never get back. Sure. Everything, everything's all right now. In the bottle? We'll, we'll never see it again. I got rid of it. I got rid of it. Robert, what is it? Don't, don't get upset, dear. It's, it's just that I feel so swell. Oh, darling. I guess, I guess I gave you a devil of a time. It, I, it all seems so silly now. Come on, let's forget about it and have a drink. Let's celebrate. Good. And let's not talk about it anymore. Let's have that drink. I'll mix it. No, no, nothing to do. And you sit down and be comfortable. Let, let me do it. I hope that some of that... What's the matter? I don't know. The lock to the liquor cabinet seems to be jammed or something. Oh, now I got it. It's all right, dear. I... Well, what do you have, dear? Scotch? Oh, my Lord. Robert, what is it? Look. There in the cabinet. That bottle. It's come back. It's come back!
There's nothing seriously wrong with your husband, Mrs. Wilder. Merely nerves. I recommend a complete rest. Dr. Benson, do you think he should be removed to a hospital? Oh, definitely not. He can rest in his own room. In fact, there's no reason why he should even stay in bed as long as he relaxes and doesn't excite himself. I should like to talk to him. Do you think it would disturb him? Not at all. Go ahead, Miss Wilder. Thank you. I won't be a moment. Two more days. Two more days. Two more days. Robert, the doctor says you're going to be all right. He doesn't know. It's no use. Robert, I can't stand for this. Even though I don't believe in this foolish legend, I can see what it's done to you. But you must believe it. You saw how the bottle came back after I tried to get rid of it. Now, Robert, it must have been in the liquor cabinet all the time. You were so excited when you rushed out of here, I didn't even think you had it with you. You're just deluding yourself. No, Susan. In any event, I'm going to put an end to all this. I'm going to take that bottle and sell it. And sell it for less than you paid for it. For two cents. Then, darling, if I do, will you be satisfied in your own mind that nothing's going to happen to you? Yes, Susan. If you can sell the bottle, then I'll be all right. I know I will. Champagne, darling. Champagne. We're going to have a party. And if anyone comes to the door, we won't answer. Don't you think you're overdoing it a bit? On the contrary, I've felt wonderful all day. Ever since you told me that you sold the bottle to Mr. James. All right, Robert. A toast. A toast. I drink to the ruination of all imps, be they in bottles or otherwise. Don't you're not listening. Susan, there's, there's just one thing that bothers me. How did you ever get Jameson to buy the bottle? He's such a, a superstitious old guy. <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, he was pretty difficult. He said he'd take it temporarily to help us out. But he made me promise I'd find someone else to buy it from him. What? No one will buy it for a penny. Who, who, whoever did it, be stuck with it. Robert, you have plenty of friends who do anything to help you get over this ridiculous delusion. Friends? Who? What, what friends? Never mind. Now, for the last time, Robert, Mr. Jameson did buy the bottle from you, and I have arranged to have someone else buy it from Jameson. You have? Yes, I have, and that's all you need now. Now, is this a celebration, or isn't it? Oh, darling, I'm sorry. You certainly have some fun to do. I won't say any more about it, I promise you. That's better. Now let's drink the champagne before it gets slapped. Oh, someone would come at a time like this. Don't answer. Well, I better. Oh, now, Susan. I, I think it's something I ordered from the store earlier. I'll be right back. Is Robert Wilder? Yes. I got a package here for you. Don't know what's in it, but it's marked fragile. Must be glass. Oh, that's quite all right. I know what it is. Thank you. Oh, lady, just one more thing. Yes? This uh, sounds kind of screwy, but it says on here, C-O-D, one penny. That's right. C-O-D, one penny. All the rest, you know the rest. But in a few days, my wife had changed from a perfectly normal woman into the person you know now. And if something isn't done within two days, the fortnight expires and she'll be beyond hope. So you can say what you like of paranoia, schizophrenia, use all the scientific terminology that you want. I know that my wife went mad because of the bottle in her. However, I... I hardly expect famous psychiatrists like yourselves to believe that. As I told you, Dr. Jenkins, it's a most unusual case. I was unaware of these facts, however, when I asked you to consult with me. I understand, Doctor. First, Mr. Wilder believes the bottle is inhabited by a genie, a creature. Then, through association and suggestion, his wife is led to believe the same thing. The bottle comes to her, and she believes she is mad. Her malady has all the earmarks of auto... auto suggestion. Yes, I... I believe that's what it is. Oh, well, yes, yes. That's in self hypnosis. A perfect analysis, Dr. Jenkins. I wish I could believe something like that. Mr. Wilder, I think I have a cure for your wife. You mean it? Do you really think you can help Susan? I believe so. If she is able to sell the bottle within the fortnight to someone else, it might cure her. Or at least compel her to believe she was cured. That's, just, that's the legend, but how could she sell the bottle? She paid one cent for it. There, there is no smaller monetary denomination. No, not in American money. Dr. Erickson, do you still have that English half penny, that uh, luck charm of yours? 
halfpenny. I think I see what you have in mind, Dr. Jenkins. Well, yes, I still have it. Here. Oh, thank you. If the woman deludes herself that she can only be cured by selling the bottle, then I'll humor her and buy it. Excellent, Dr. Jenkins. Mr. Wilder, I think we can promise to have your wife well again in a few weeks. Or in a few days, for that matter. And now, Mr. Wilder, if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to your wife and try my experiment. Just a moment, Doctor. I don't quite understand you. You mean that you're going to buy the bottle? Yes, for a half penny. But you know you'll never be able to sell it again. Sell it? Well, you let me take care of that problem, Mr. Wilder. Go along, Doctor. Doctor, wait. Don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? If you buy that bottle, then you'll become mad. Well, I'll take my chance on that. Good night, Mr. Wilder. Dr. Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins. So he doesn't believe me. Well, I warned him. I warned him. And Dr. Jenkins? What about Dr. Jenkins? Did he go mad? Well, now... What do you think? Hmm. What do you think of that, huh? Do you think it's possible that, that there was something in that bottle? Well, it couldn't be, could there? Still, I'd like to know how that doctor comes out on you. <laughs> anyway, that was tonight's Mystery Playhouse performance, The Bottle Limit, by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is Peter Lawler, closing the doors, the Mystery Playhouse. Good night. Good night.